question? Who has some answers? Somebody want to tell me, if God knows everything, why should I pray? Somebody say something. Because we need to acknowledge Him. And uh, actually, if we don't pray and don't ask for anything, we, there's no way for us to increase our faith and trust in Him. Okay, I guess I can sit down now. <laughs> I want you to, um, I have some papers up here, and I'm going to show you, that I'm going to pass them out now. Well, actually, I'm going to ask some help to pass them out. There's enough for every person, including the children, to have this, please. Now, we have a card that's out in our display. And our card looks a lot like this, only it's burgundy, like the one I have here. And it also has, please, and I'm going to ask you an odd question. Could you get your cell phones out, please? Would everybody be willing to get their cell phones out? And um, it has a, a QR scanner on it. And if you will scan the paper copy that is being handed out to you, your phone will bring up the, um, the things that I want you to see. Um, and then if you can't see them on the screen, you'll be able to see them on your phone. And one more time, I'm going to put up a black one. If you're really cool, just point your, point your phone at the screen and see if it works. Should. Come on, Rick, try it for me. Your camera. You have to have your camera on. You have to turn your camera on or if you have a Q reader. And, and point it. Turn your camera on. Point it at the screen or point it at the... The black one that, that are one of the, you know, the little square that's on paper. Does it work? Yes. Does it bring it up the website? Then touch the website and, and you'll open up to the notes for today. It's a little orange thing that pops up. You touch that and it leads you to a website. And if, you, if it's too hard off the screen, do it off your paper. You have everything that I need to know. Are, you, are we good? My way. All right. All right. Now I'm going to uh, touch my screen here, where it says "click" to click and control and click. And this is supposed to work too. Uh, There we go. I'm going to skip verification. My screen is going to come up with the same thing that's on your phone. How about that? Oh, how about that not? <laughs> All right. Well, what we'll do is we'll close the PowerPoint. Now, is that on screen? You also have something on your phone, do you not? Okay, then I will just talk to you about the same thing that is on your phone. On your phone it says, prayer, what is it, and how do I do it? And um, what I'm going to talk about is this beautiful little card that we can pass out says, how to have a better prayer life. And I thought before we pass them out, we should ought to know what's on the card. So if we do give one to somebody, you'll know what's, um, what you're giving away. And then the paper that you have, we'll look at that in just a little bit. But hopefully you can stand down with me as I um, go ahead and share a little bit of this. Now, why wouldn't my screen project? Can you tell me that? Nobody knows? Hmm. Why wouldn't my screen project? Sometimes it comes up all by itself and you go, go away. 
Okay, that's the way it goes. So, I'm going to have another prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the time that we have together to worship you and to study about prayer and to know answer to our questions about prayer. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, prayer is a simple uh, act of faith with powerful life-changing effects, and it's talking to God and opening your heart to Him at, just as you would open your heart to a friend. And so this, what we're studying this morning, there's six, six things that we hope that we'll discover. One, the definition of prayer. One, the importance. Two, the importance of praying. Three, the what, when, where, and why, and how of prayer. Boy, this is a lot. We could study all these just separately. And different examples of prayer found in the Bible. And two prayer models that are found in the Bible. And practical ways of praying effectively. Now, if it's your desire to learn more about prayer, you're not alone. In fact, Jesus' own disciples once asked him about how to pray. And he's just as willing to teach us today how to pray as he was then. So let's begin with the definition. Remember in Luke chapter 11, verse 1, Jesus said, uh, or now it came to pass as he was praying a certain place when he ceased, that one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John also taught his disciples. Now, if you will look at your paper then, the second page, after the pictures. <laughs> You'll notice that there's uh, different examples of different prayers in the Bible. And then it says the Lord's Prayer. And so if this was really a model of the way Jesus wanted us to pray, we have outlined here, addressing God as Father. You see it on your paper? Yep. Uh, recognize that God is highly exalted, showing reverence to his holy name, expressing our longing for his coming kingdom, Choosing to submit to God's will, presenting our daily needs, praying for our spiritual needs, asking for God's guidance and power to overcome temptation, asking for deliverance, and, you know, like if you're in a big trouble spot, and acknowledge God's greatness, power, and authority. That's all in what we call the Lord's Prayer. And as it is a model, you can see that that's what happened in Luke chapter 11, verse 1. So, what is prayer? Let's begin with the definition. Prayer is talking to God as a close friend, opening your heart to Him as your confidant. And through prayer, He can become your closest friend, as Abraham was called the friend of God. Now, that's found in James chapter 2 and 23. If you're using your phone, raise your hand, let me see. We've got pretty good participation there. Okay, so you can see where I'm at. You know that I'm going right down this, right down this list. But it's so, it was so handy, I thought, why not study it like this? This is what Hannah, Samuel's mother, did when she was praying for a baby boy and God answered her prayer. And you'll notice on your um, phone, if you touch that scripture with your finger, the one that's uh, kind of green, it'll pop up the scripture. And I'm going to read the scripture. It says, so Hannah arose after they had finished eating and drinking in Shil Shiloh, and now the Eli, the priest, was sitting on the seat by the doorpost of the tabernacle of the Lord, and she was in bitterness of soul and prayed to the Lord and wept in anguish. Then she made a vow, and we know that when she made the vow, she was in bitterness of soul and in anguish when she prayed. Wow, it's showing up on the back screen. Wonderful. And this, um, this is something that sometimes we wouldn't do in public. We wouldn't be as open to doing public, to be in bitterness of soul and in anguish and crying. I remember I traveled uh, with evangelist Joe Cruz once or twice and um, back in the day. And he, I asked him up because I was coming out of the Pentecostal church and there was a lot of crying and anguish, even at the altar. We would come to the altar almost at every service. And we would put our souls up before the Lord, sort of like Hannah, really. Um, the altar was a place you came to pray, and at the end of the service, when you heard the sermon, you you said, God, I want that to be worked out in my heart, and so you would not be shy. It, was, uh, it wasn't like the only people that ever came to the, to the altar were people that 
were really bad sinners and they really needed to talk to God. No, it was like we all came down because we all knew we needed help. And uh, we weren't bad sinners, but we did need God's help. And so we would come to the front. So I asked Brother Joe Cruz, I said, you know, in the Adventist church, everybody's so, um, mm, mm, I don't even know what I said to him. But there wasn't a lot of coming to the front of the altar and crying out to God uh, that I had seen in the, any church service in the Adventist church that I've been to. And so he said to me, well, Sister Deborah, when you're, when I'm alone in my prayer closet, many times I weep tears. I weep tears for um, the souls that I'm preaching to and asking God to save them. And so, yes, I do cry in my prayer closet. Well, Hannah cried right out loud in public. And um, prayer is connecting with God. And you can have it anytime, anywhere, anyhow, alone or with the group. And we can find such an example of communion with Enoch, who walked with God in evil, and he was not, for God took him away. Now, that doesn't literally mean that he literally walked with God. Rather, he kept in touch with him everywhere he went and in everything he did. And just like you do with your best friend, my girlfriend changed her phone number, and she said she was going to text it to me. And I kept calling and leaving messages on the old number. You know why she changed her number? Her sister, her sister wouldn't um, call her back because the first three digits of her number came out to be 666 the last time she changed her phone. And she said, my sister won't even call me. And I said, whoa, that's a little superstitious. But anyway, she changed her number and I couldn't get a hold of her. And I felt that I started to miss her. And usually it's the other way. She usually calls me all the time and I, I'm, I'm like, you know, trying to keep up with that. But I missed her. If you have a close friend, you want to keep in touch, amen? amen. Yep. All right, if you're awake, say amen. 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 i got to have it louder. If, if you have a close friend you want to keep in touch, you call them, right? Yep. Amen. 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 <laughs> and that's how tight friendships are made, aren't they? So that's exactly how it should be with our study of the Word of God, um, with our relationship with God. Amen. His Word, when we study nature and all of creation, His providential guidance, how things, you know, happen, uh, situations, then the, those situations happen and it gives you insight and and uh, and sometimes it's intervention. Sometimes something will keep you from doing something. And then the counsel of other believers, you can ask other people what they think. And then just the impressions that he puts in our hearts as we pray to him according to his word. So these are all things that are part of our relationship with God. There's another example of a man of God that would then Moses. And the Bible says that Moses, the Lord spoke unto Moses face to face as a man speaks unto his friend. So that's in Exodus chapter 33 and verse 11. So God's always seeking to communicate with us and to connect with each of us in the, in the most personal and intimate way, a connection so strong and so uh, close as any human tie. And the best news is that the privilege of having this kind of connection with him is yours and mine, too. So what's the importance of prayer? Well, uh, in 2 Corinthians, and some of you can touch that one also, uh, just touch it in the, the scriptural come up. It says, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, and verse 4, it says, Whose minds the God of this age has blinded, who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. Does that sound like we have an enemy? Yes. Yes. Okay, guys, i got to have more response than that. Amen. Thank Amen. you. you got to prove to me your way, otherwise, you know, it just doesn't work up here. And so prayer is open, open communication with God. We humans are born into a world that's ruled by the devil, who's described as the God of this world. And so the Bible tells us we can't do anything without God's help, but we can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens us. Amen? Amen. So we need that power. We need that strength. And you know what? If we don't have a relationship with our Creator, we're going to live and die as Satan's captives, which is not a good point. So, But God is all-powerful. Greater is He that is in us than He that is in the world. Amen? Amen? And so through prayer, we can reach out to God for help. And he can enable us to confront the things that face us. 
And that's in Philippians chapter 4 and verse 13. What does it say in Philippians 4 and 13? It says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So we don't have to be thinking about ourselves as not having power because Christ in us gives us the power. Amen? Amen. So we're involved in a spiritual warfare, which answers the question, why do I, if God knows everything, why should I pray? And we are involved in spiritual warfare, Ephesians chapter 6. Um, it says this, and you can touch your own Ephesians 6, and you'll find out it says, For we do not wrestle, in verse 12, against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness, in the heavenly places. So, knowing that, knowing what's going on, what are we supposed to do? And what does that mean that we can actually do something about it? Um, when we present our requests to God. Does anybody remember when um, they were rebuilding the wall around Jerusalem and they came down from, the Assyrians came down and they said, oh, you don't think that your God's going to, don't you think your God's going to protect you in this city? Why all the other cities have fallen down? And they had gods. And he says, and didn't God, your God, even send us here to destroy your city? Didn't he tell us to come down and do this? And they, um, they didn't answer a word. They went back, though, and Hezekiah spread out. Wait a minute, I got the right, right, right one going on? I, got, I might have mixed up Nehemiah with the other one. But anyway, when they spread out the words, when they spread out the words before God and they asked God for help, God did help. And I'm really sorry I didn't just do that one off the top of my head. I should have thought about it sooner. God gives help against our enemies. He is able. God, he is able. In Luke chapter 11, verse 9, I'm pretty sure it's going to tell us that if we ask, Ask, so I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you shall find, and it will be open to you. Amen? Yeah, amen? We don't have to feel helpless about our problem when God's ready to listen and grant us divine assistance. And one of the things that was in our scripture reading today, and um, if I'm going to grab my Bible or the uh, bulletin, oops, I think it goes away. Chapter 66 and verses 16 through 20. Would you open up Psalm chapter uh, Psalm number 66 and verses um, 16 through 20? You may have had that open to the scripture reading. Um, it, it's make a joyful shout to the Lord. Now that's the beginning of it. So sing out the honor of His name. Verse 2. Make His praise glorious. Say to the Lord, How awesome are Your works! Through the greatness of your power, your enemies shall submit, submit themselves to you. And all the, there's that promise, your enemies shall submit themselves to you, Lord. And all the earth shall worship you and sing praises to you. They shall Amen. sing praises to your name. Now, verse 5 of chapter 66 of Psalm. Come and see the works of the Lord. He is awesome in his doing toward the sons of men. He turned the sea into dry land. They went through the river on foot. And there we will rejoice in him. He rules his power. He rules by his power forever. His eyes observe the nations. Do not let the rebellious exalt themselves. Oh, bless our God, you peoples, and make the voice of his praise to be heard. I'm going to skip down to um, verse 13. I will go into your house with burnt offerings. I will pay my vows, which my lips have uttered, and my mouth has spoken when I was in trouble. I will offer you burnt sacrifices of fat animals with the sweet aroma of rams. I will offer bulls with goats. And then this is the part that I think we need to remember when it's time to pray. Come and hear, all you who fear God, and I will declare what he has done for my soul. I cried to him with my mouth, and he was extolled with my tongue. You know, you get to say things out loud about how wonderful God is, and that's what this is about. But verse 18 is the caveat. Verse 18 is the disclaimer. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear. But certainly God has heard me. He has attended to the voice of my prayer. Blessed be God who has not turned away my prayer, 
nor his mercy from me. So, how do we get to the place where we don't observe iniquity in our heart? Whose righteousness are we counting on? <laughs> in 1 John, uh, it says, If I confess my sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to what? Cleanse, Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So it's through confession of our sins that we can have that heart that's, that's cleansed from all unrighteousness. Now you know this. This is Christianity 101, isn't it? But what keeps us sometimes from actually approaching the throne of God with, with boldness? Is it not because we think, oh, you know, God would do that for somebody. There's a whole bunch of things you could think that are not true. You could say, God might do that for somebody else, but he wouldn't do it for me. And just about the time you need, you need his help, you could say, you know, I just fought with my husband or my wife, and I can't, I can't ask God for help here now. You know, I'm just such a not perfect person. And then I'm counting on whose righteousness? I'd be counting on my own righteousness, wouldn't I? So if I can take First John and say, um, if I confess my sin, he is faithful and just to forgive me my sins and to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. And we talked about confessing sin means agreeing with God that something is sin. God shows us what a sin is, and we can make up excuses, say, no, Lord, we talked about that, just bad habit, just something that my family always, you know, we, it's just the way we are. I'm Irish, I'm Catholic, I'm, I'm a Polish, I'm a Italian, I'm, a, you know, American, I'm this, and, and that's the way we are, and we, we can't fix it. I'm from Ohio, I'm from Michigan, I'm from New York, I'm from Connecticut, I'm from Louisiana, that's the way we are. And the answer is no. We are human beings. We're all one blood. God fixes us. Amen. And he doesn't let us have, you know, if he shows me something and I say an excuse, I'm not confessing my sins. If he shows me something and I say, you're right, I agree. That's something I, you're showing me and I agree. I'm confessing that that is a sin. And then we had a sermon a while back where we say, I'd rather have Christ than that. And when that's done, we have done what First John says. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us. And now we're white as snow. And to cleanse us. Now we're, now we're in this position where we're in verse 18. We're not regarding iniquity in our heart. And God will hear us. Because the second part says, he has attended to the voice of my prayer. He has not turned away my prayer, nor his mercy from me. Do we need his mercy? Yes. Say, God have mercy on me. God have mercy on me. A sinner. A sinner. Do we believe it? Yes. Does he do it? Yes. He does have mercy on us. And so our heart has to be clean and clear for the to have a prayer, a prepared heart to say these words to God. So the Holy Spirit helps us to present the prayer before God in an acceptable way. You know, he makes intercession for us. And I'm going to touch this one and See if I can get it on the screen. Um, Romans chapter, yeah, because remember when we were in Isaiah, we we're talking about your iniquities have separated you between from you and your God, and your sins have hidden his face from you so that he will not hear. It's our iniquities that separate us, you know. Um, God doesn't move away, but our sins, we look at we look toward God and we gotta look through our sins. It's a bad, bad lens. Amen. And so we have to get rid of that lens so we can look at God clearly. Now over here in Romans chapter 8 and verse 26 and 27, we need the Holy Spirit to help us pray. Well, how many have thought about that, that we need the Holy Spirit to help us pray? We don't know that we should pray for what we should pray for, the Bible says. Likewise, the Spirit also helps us have weaknesses. We do not know what we should pray for as we ought. You know, we could say, Lord, those Samaritans didn't treat us right. So I call down thunder and have them destroyed. I don't like the way they're treating me at church. I don't like the way they're treating me at work. I don't like the way they're treating me, you know, in the house. Lord, should I call down thunder and have those Samaritans destroyed? And Jesus said, you don't know what spirit you're of. And so here we go. We don't know what to pray sometimes. But if we if we'll, uh, wait before the Lord, the Holy Spirit will say, you know, that person's really afraid. They're afraid of failure. They're afraid that they're not going to succeed. And if you pray for them about that, 
I can fix them, and that will fix your relationship with them. <laughs> so likewise, the Spirit also helps us in our weaknesses, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit Himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is. And if I was to touch this one, I'm afraid I'm going to go off my screen all the way all together. I would go over here, and you could do that too, and you'll notice that the whole, um, the Biblia, Romans will come up for you if you touch that more. So I'm going to go back here. Oh, it happened? Yep, that's there too. So I'm going to go back down where I was as we continue. Maybe open up a different one. Okay. What, Marty? You're doing my screen? Oh. Oh, now the mystery has come to pass. <laughs> well, I thought I was doing it, but that's funny. Um, Marty's controlling the computer back there. So where am I then? How does prayer work? Then angels bear our prayers to heaven. What a thought. The Bible refers to them as ministering spirits sent forth to us uh, who will be heirs of salvation. I'm going to touch Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 14. It says, are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for those who will inherit salvation? And that is the truth. They are, they have been sent forth to minister to us. Amen. Even the little childish needs of little children are carried to heaven by angels. And that's why Jesus cautioned that so we should never do anything with the little children. Now, after the angels take our prayers before God, and I never thought about them, like, are they written? I mean, obviously, are they little bundles of prayers, you know? I always think of it in a more electronic way. Um, it's just sort of zap there, you know. If we can text, I'm sure God can make things go even faster. But as we think about it, um, there's only one mediator between God and man, and that's the man Jesus Christ. Amen. Yes, yes. We we don't come before God in our own um, in our own self. Uh, it's through the mediation of Jesus Christ that we have this precious blood of Jesus which was cleansing us so that we could come. And then I love this one. Um, uh, I'm just going to read it. God's love for us is so great and unconditional, no matter how good we could be, we could never earn such love from, uh, such great love from Him. So it's not because of our goodness that we're accepted before God, but because of Christ's righteousness. Amen. Amen. Now, just like the priests used to burn incense while the people prayed outside the sanctuary, and guess what? That's still in the book of Luke, chapter 1, verse 10. And the whole multitude of the people was praying outside at the hour of incense. So is this a group prayer or a single private prayer? They're in a group and they're probably praying privately, aren't they? Yes. So we can be in a group and praying privately, and it's just it, and it's the it's been done. It's it's uh, nothing wrong with that to be in a group and pray privately. You can even have this prayer time that Ricky was describing. That um, our church last last vespers, we just said, "Wow, we." Um, and we thank Brother B for, for, you know, saying we need group prayer. We need the strength that comes from praying together. And so uh, I was up in the front. There was a group in the back. And I was praying out, out softly what I wanted to pray. Um, others were praying, listening to each other. But when you come, uh, if you decide to come between 8 and 9 o'clock on early Sabbath morning, you can, at any time in between there, you can find a spot where you can open up your heart and the angels will be just surrounding this place. Yeah. And we want things to be changing as the angels, as we, as we pray. So we want God's presence, we want deliverance to come in to this church through the, and about the fact that we're going to pray. Yeah. Now the question was, does God always answer our prayers exactly as we ask Him to? Kind of address that in story time, that uh, sometimes... Uh, it's just exactly what you ask for, and you just kind of go, wow. So I, most of the time, get, get, get things that happen to me that I didn't ask for. And I go, wow, that was, that was God that did that. And, um, but 
sometimes he delays in answering our requests. Maybe that is timing. The timing is not the best yet. Did you ever wonder why David was the youngest son and he got to be the one that was anointed as king? Think how old his older brothers were at the time when it really all came to pass. God knew he needed the youngest one to, to, to set this thing in motion. Not only was it David's character, but it had to do with his age, had to do with the time and the fullness of time some things come to pass. So God's timing is perfect if we can be patiently and waiting for them. And in Psalms, verse 84, and 